What's up everyone? As always, let's jump right into the meat of this video. I have right here a reference PCB 1080 Ti from XLR8, a card which I reviewed in a video right here. We're going to replace the stock air cooler for a thermal take water block. This is an acrylic block with a copper base, similar to the ones I use in Andromeda for the 1080s in there. And this is of course compatible with the reference Ti PCB. It's a pretty straightforward process. You'll see that well coming up right now. So pretty much the only thing we're going to need for this entire teardown and replacement process is a small tool kit. Now I recommend having some Torx screws in here, some very small ones just in case, you never know with your particular card. Uh, if we want to do customization, Torx screws would come in handy, but I think just for the regular teardown process, a few sets of small Phillips heads will be sufficient, maybe a flat head here or there just to help pry things up need be. I don't expect with this card we'll have much difficulty at all from moving the cooler and of course everything else that we're going to need for the replacement process is included in the Thermaltake TI box. Now before we even touch what is inside this box, we're going to need to tear down the air cooler, take it off, strip everything down to just the circuit board. I recommend getting a good look for what we're going to need to remove, starting first with what it looks like, these four screws holding in the, uh, the air cooler itself. These surround the GPU usually. So it looks like, yeah, just that four screws hold this entire air cooler in place. Also bear in mind that you will have probably two or three fan cables to disconnect as you're removing the cooler from the circuit board. By the way, a magnetic screwdriver comes in very handy in instances like these. All right, so those four screws are off. Now let's see if we can, there we go. We'll have to use a bit of force. Sometimes the stock thermal paste is a bit sticky. So uh, don't pull too hard, you might have a, a screw that's still holding things together, but if you have everything off that you're sure about, then just kind of give it a gentle nudge, and there you go. In this case, the entire air cooler is removed with a simple four screws. Now at this point, you'll want to use preferably a lint-free cloth to remove the stock thermal compound from the GPU die. I'm using toilet paper, that's just because I don't have a lint-free cloth around at this point. It's, it's okay, you're gonna have just tiny little microfibers everywhere. Now you're also gonna want some isopropyl alcohol, preferably 90% or above, and maybe something like a Q-tip to get the small crevices around the die. Try to remove as much of the stock thermal compound as possible, prepping it for the new compound we're gonna apply here in a second. I'm gonna do maybe a little something like that right there. Then you can take the Q-tip, kind of roll it around in there, get it soaked up as much as possible. And then we're gonna clean the die should look nice and shiny when it's all said and done. Once the die is clean and dry, use your own thermal compound. Thermaltake includes their own, so that's what we're gonna do here. No matter what you do with this pattern, you're always gonna get chopped somewhere in the comments, so whatever, I'll make it look like that. That way a bunch of people will have reason to complain. Again though, as long as it's covering the whole thing by the time you sandwich the cooler on, it's okay if you add a little too much, it'll be fine. You'll be good to go from a thermal perspective. Get it? Because it's thermal take. By the way, we're not down to the bare PCB yet. This piece right here needs to be removed as well as the backplate. Although I guess in this case, you could leave the backplate on. It's not really hurting anything. Uh, but for the sake of consistency here, you might have a backplate that is incompatible with your acrylic block. We're gonna go ahead and remove it all. Okay. There's the back plate, no longer needed, and it looks like the last thing we need to remove here is the heat sink over the VRMs and MOSFETs. Okay, this is taking a bit of force. I'm gonna be careful though. There we go. So there's just a bunch of uh, thermal pads on the back side of this. Sometimes these get sticky, just like the stock thermal compound will. Uh, so just be careful not to bend the board or break anything on the board in the removal process. So that's it. This is the Bear 1080 Ti reference PCB. Nothing else on here except what belongs on the circuit board itself. So with that, we can go ahead and open up the uh, box that Thermaltake gave us, apart from what I already pulled out, which was just the uh, included uh, little tool driver here and the thermal compound, everything else in the box we now need. So what you'll get in this Thermaltake kit, bunch of manuals. This is the back plate. Really nice that they include one of those. Underneath, of course, remember you get the, the driver as well as the thermal compound. You also get a couple of these uh, G quarter inch caps and the screw set, a bunch of thermal pads, and lastly, the acrylic block. Check out how beautiful this thing is. I love the way it looks, especially on camera. You guys are getting, wow, I'm doing y'all such a solid right now. Check that out. And here is the copper base underneath with a nickel plating. Now the next step, according to the manual, we want to place thermal pads here, here, 
here. These are the, the VRAM modules, by the way. And then back here over the MOSFET. So we need to cut these down to size. You can just do this by hand, just kind of eyeball it. It's okay if it hangs a little over, just make sure that you're covering everything. So we'll lay one down right there. Our second one right here in front. Our third one's going here. So this is an 11 gigabyte card, right? So 11 gigs of VRAM. So each module is a one gig module. So we have four, eight, nine, ten. There's a blank here, would be 12, but this is a GP102 card. There's the 11th one. Okay, now bear in mind, we do still have the plastic on the tops here. We'll take these off once we uh, prepare the acrylic block. Okay, there's our next one. And the manual says the last piece needs to be right here, a bit thinner. Okay, there we go. That's it. Just pull off these plastic tops. Try not to touch these with your bare hands. You'll get oils on them and that will impede the ability for these pads to transfer heat. Okay, time for the merge. At this point, go ahead and take your acrylic block. Now align the cutouts in the acrylic itself with the caps on the board. If you can, use the 8-pin, 6-pin as well. Depends on the board that you have. Uh, but you should use things that are cut out in the acrylic to align it properly. Just kind of set it on there gently. This is a pretty heavy block most of them will be. Hold the block in place once it's aligned, flip it over, be careful don't let the block fall when it's upside down. Take thin plastic washer, and then one of the screws with the springs included, and I'll align that up as best you can. Screw it in place and there you go, the block should be relatively stable at this point. It's kind of a two-man job because you have to hold the acrylic block up, you also have to somehow guide a screw into that hole. That first one's always difficult, but once you get past that first one, the block's pretty much in place. Just set the other screws in where they belong, and you'll have a secure acrylic block. And there's number four. All right, four screws around the GPU, check. Now the rest of these threads are here for added stability. Don't miss a single one of them, or you'll have a sagging water block. Definitely not good. Okay, now the rest of these threads, this one here, 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 and here, are for the back plate. So we're going to install the back plate next. This part is pretty straightforward. Just match up the threads and you should be good to go. Now it doesn't have any thermal properties, so it will get hot, but it won't pull heat specifically away from vital components on the board. Nonetheless, it is still nice that thermal take included one. And there you go. That is literally the entire installation process. Again, not very complicated. I don't even use the manual anymore because it's pretty straightforward with any block that you use. Some will have special wiring instructions. I'm going to be installing a Fantex block onto a TI here soon. Uh, that comes with included LED kits and whatnot. But uh, this right here is just a pretty straightforward uh, rudimentary water block. All we're going to need. Now let's check out some thermals. Now disclaimer, I did not yet install the 1080 Ti water block into a custom loop. It's a lot of work to do that, so I'm, I'm saving that for a separate video. Uh, but this is a 1080, just a regular old 1080 water block before and after install. So the first temperature you're seeing here in yellow, the 69 degree low temperature, was with a ACX 3.0 EVGA cooler on the car, so just an air cooler. And then when we swapped that for the Thermaltake 1080 block, those temperatures lowered under load to 61 degrees Celsius. Something else important to note, the idle temperatures did not change at all, and this is because I recorded idle temperatures after the load temperature, so you don't get really true idle temps until after you've let things settle down after a pretty long day of intensive tasks, and those temperatures leveled off for both the air cooler and the liquid cooler at 28 degrees Celsius apiece. This, mind you, was with a single 360 millimeter AIO for the thermal take block, and and just the regular stock fan RPM settings for the EVGA cooler. Now keep in mind that 8 degree delta doesn't seem all that compelling, especially when you consider the price of a full on custom loop can cost upwards of $2,000 for a full custom loop PC build. And that's just in the custom loop gear alone, depending on how fancy you want to get with it. So I don't want you to look at just the temperatures to kind of rationalize this. Custom loops are always going to be a bit excessive. They're not going to be the best price per dollar uh, thing you can do with your PC. But another factor to consider is sound. When you custom cool a graphics card, apart from the fluid actually moving through the card, which you won't really hear unless you put your ear right up next to it, a custom cooled card is pretty much inaudible. Whereas if you had an air cooled card, things would get pretty loud as you put that graphics card under load. Now that's not to say that custom loop PCs can't be loud. It depends on your fan curve settings, depends on how big your radiator is, how big your fans are, and your overclocks. But generally speaking, you can move the sound away from your graphics card 
to somewhere else in your system and uh, typically lower your fan curve to uh, that of a much more tolerable RPM. The addition of this point still won't justify the price ultimately of a custom loop PC, but for those who have already set aside the money, who are determined to spend that much on custom gear, heck, you can make pretty awesome looking PCs with custom loop parts, uh, then installing a graphics card water block is pretty much mandatory unless you just want to cool your CPU, in which case I don't really see the point all that much unless you just want it to look cool and you want really stellar CPU overclocks, but you're not worried about your graphics cards. But if it's a gaming PC, you should nine times out of ten cool your graphics cards too, in which case this video would come in handy for most of you. If you like this video, by the way, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. We're going to be reviewing a Gigabyte ITX Ryzen motherboard. Looks really cool, and it won't break the bank. It's also in small form factor. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.